Joining me now is Ned Ryan. He's a Republican strategist and the founder and CEO of the American Majority and a former speechwriter for President George W. Bush. With us here in studio, Richard Roth, founder of the Roth Law Firm. Richard, let's start with you. Who is Warren trying to appeal to with this kind of move? You know, I... We, we should write down today's date because you're right. Uh, <laughs> I'm always right. You're, you're, just you're right agree. in my eyes in this instance. No, I, I think Warren is missing the message. Warren can't. I mean, she's not appealing. Is she appealing to the Palestinians who vote in this country? I don't think that's much of a vote. So, And she's offending, not offending, but she's offsetting the Jews by going ahead and saying that. Technically, she's right. We do agree we have a two-state solution. But... I think your, your, your comment, the reason why you're right, is because she's ignoring the other side of the equation. She's ignoring the fact that Mahmoud Abbas and, and the Palestinians are really not playing, are not in the game. They're not really committed to peace with Israel. And that's the frustration I have as a Democrat seeing Elizabeth Warren, who doesn't really relate to the Jews, because the Jews are not Look, jumping you, on you her can't, for that reason. You can't refer to the Jews as a monolithic voting bloc. Fair. But, Ned, President Trump has been trying to make the point that it is the far left of the Democratic Party that is calling the shots, that they're pulling all the other candidates right. to that extreme left position. Does a statement like this by Warren only serve to confirm that point by the president? Well, it does, actually. I don't think it's that surprising that Elizabeth Warren made this comment this uh, this week. Uh, the week that AOC and Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar endorsed Bernie Sanders. Again, okay, those are the most strident anti-Israel voices in Congress. Uh, and they have quite a following in the far left that is increasingly becoming more anti-Israel. Again, when you see the boycott divestment sanction movement that has gained real traction in the Democratic grassroots, I tell you, I, I know what she's making a play for. She's making a play for more of the far left, who, again, are the grassroots activists, but also the small dollar donor base inside the Democratic Party because she wants to win the primary uh, for the 2020 Democratic nomination. Uh, and, and again, the shame of it, again, as you have pointed out, is she didn't find it within herself to be able to condemn the Palestinian Authority that has shown absolutely uh, really no uh, willingness to negotiate for a two-state solution and, and, and a peaceful solution to this, even though there have been multiple offers and not even for long-time peace. For, for 20 years of peace, they've rejected statehood offers from U.S. and Israel three times. And well, the amazing part to me, if I could, about the boycott divestment sanction movement it is insidiously anti-Semitic, and it has a one-state solution, which causes Israel to cease to exist and only Palestine to remain. Ned, Ned, I, I, I agree with you, but let's not forget that the goal of every Democrat and every Republican is to win their party. So I agree with you that she's catering to the Democrats. All right, the problem is that if she goes too far left, which she may be doing, it's going to alienate the, it's going to alienate what, the moderate exactly. Democrats. That's the problem. Well, Richard, you but, already but, have but several. Problem. You already have several wealthy Democrats saying that if Warren is the candidate, they will not support the party. They're obviously concerned about their own interests with some of her socialist policies coming up with these wealth taxes and such. Now she could also isolate other Democrats within the party with this kind of statement. So. Richard, to your point, does it in a way assure that there will be a different candidate? Well, I mean, it, we're sort of, we're, we're in fascinating times. We may very well have a, a, an impeached president who gets reelected. That's where it looks like that's where we're headed. Elizabeth Warren, I don't believe, has the ability to win the, uh, to, to, to just get enough votes. I don't think she does. I think the left tendencies hurt her. I think she's like Bernie Sanders. I think she's like Mayor Pete Buttigieg. I think that she cannot win the popular right. vote, and that's a problem. And Ned, no. and Ned but, but Democrats yes. would say that it's President Trump that's made Israel more of a partisan issue. A lot of Israeli supporters are putting this on Trump, that it's his fault that Israel, which is typically a bipartisan issue, has now become a partisan issue. Is that fair? It, no, it's not, and it shouldn't be. Again, as you made the point, I would say that they're not only our most reliable ally, I would make the argument they might be our only trusted ally, actually, in the Middle East. This is a Republican and Democratic issue uh, to be loyal to the state of Israel uh, in the Middle East. But I will say this, going back to Richard's comments earlier, I have been making the argument for months and months and months that whoever wins the nomination inside the Democratic Party is going to have to swear allegiance to pretty much every far-left talking point and ideology. And I see this as a continuation, Elizabeth Warren's comments as a continuation. 
The problem is going to be in attempts to win the nomination and win the, the support of the far left base. By the time they win that nomination in summer of 2020, they're going to have about 90 to 100 days to try and pivot to the center and try and persuade that the mainstream American people that somehow they're not far left. And I don't think they're going to be able to do it. Well, I mean, that's, right, a, that, that, that's, I'll, that's I'll a problem with every primary. Final thought. That's a problem with every primary. And I don't know, and, and I think that the Republicans, namely Donald Trump, are doing a very good job of, of, of moving them as far left as possible so they can't go back to the Senate. I don't disagree themselves. with you, Ned. I that's think it's right. going to be very interesting. All right, this is a historic moment. We have agreement <laughs> on tonight's debate panel. Thank you so much, Richard Roth, Ned Ryan. Thank you. Appreciate it.